Um, it's really an honor for me to be among you in uh, Birmingham. Although I had the honor of coming uh, this year a few weeks for um, some classes on fiqh, usul al-fiqh. But uh, it's an honor to be here again. Um, as I was driving from London, I remembered a, an interesting story that I thought it would be good to share with you as well. You know how sometimes we listen to something as we're driving, either Qur'an or a nasheed, or sometimes the radio. A friend of mine was telling me that he had these uh, small files, so like a few minutes of recitation of Qur'an, so for example, Surat Shams or Surat Yusuf. And then he had all these different files that it, the playlist would start with Qur'an, and then it would go to some uh, du'as and matam and things like that. So he says, one day I was driving, and then Surah Shams came. And so it started reciting the first few verses. وَالشَّمْسِ وَالضُحَاهَا وَالْغَمَرِ إِذَا تَلَاهَا And all of that. And you know, the first uh, verses of Surah Shams, uh, God is just uh, swearing. He's, he's making promises, right? By the sun, by the moon, by the day, by the night. And he says, I was listening to this, and I was intrigued. Okay, what is God saying afterwards, right? Like if someone keeps telling you that I promise by the moon, I swear by the, by the sun, by the day. Okay, what is it that you're trying to tell me? So he says, I was really intrigued. And you know, sometimes we don't remember the, the next verses. He said, I'd forgotten what the next verse is, like what is actually that God is saying. So he said, as soon as the swears, like the promises ended, and it was the verse that would tell like, what is it that God wants to say? The file ended, it went to the next file. So he says, I was really, like, I really wanted to know what is it. So he says, I stopped the car, took my phone out, went to Surat Shams, and checked to see what is it. So I thought it would be nice, uh, I brought my Quran, it would be nice to go through this and see what is this, uh, that God is, is saying all of these promises. It's, God is swearing by 11 things, 11 promises before he says this. Right, so what is this? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. By the sun in its morning brightness, and by the moon as it follows it, by the day as it displays the sun's glory, and by the night as it covers it, by the sky and how he built it, and by the earth and how he spread it, by the soul and how he formed it and inspired it to know its rebellion and piety. And this is where God is actually saying, the one who purifies his soul succeeds and the one who corrupts it fails. To us, it may seem like a very obvious point, but sometimes obvious things are very important and we keep forgetting them. Bear in mind that God makes 11 promises to tell us just one line, that the one who purifies his soul succeeds and the one who corrupts it fails. And sometimes I feel like, you know, like we, from very, like from childhood, we've listened to the verses of the Quran and sometimes that's meant that like we don't uh, have that special encounter with it anymore because we've heard these verses so many times we don't understand the beauty behind it sometimes so and a good way of that is to imagine a friend of you in front of you or like or or like or what one of the imams in front of you and he wants to tell you something but he doesn't say it in the beginning he says i'm going to tell you something are you paying attention? Then he says, by the sun, by the moon. So he's building up as if he's trying to say something that, that he really wants your attention. And of course, without any of these promises, we would believe God, definitely. But why is it that God mentions all of this, all of this preparation? I think the only reason is for us to, to realize that this is a very important point. Perhaps if there's one thing in our life that we always need to remember is this one, that the one who purifies his soul succeeds 
and the one who corrupts it fails. At the end of the day, no matter what we have achieved in life, where we are, what job we have, this is the only thing that matters. Have we purified our soul or not? And we're approaching the month of Ramadan, the month of Allah, and it's the best opportunity for us to either start our journey of self-purification, or if we have started, then speed up and give it a new boost. So I thought today it would be nice to talk about seven tips, seven instructions that could help us in our attempt to purify our soul, which is what God wants us to do. So, inshallah, I will try to mention these seven points that are all taken from the Ahadith and the Quran. Sometimes I will mention the Hadith, but sometimes due to lack of time, I won't mention the Hadith, like the, the Arabic one. I'll just say it in English. But all of these seven points are from the Ahadith and from the Quran which is the only sources we have that we can be sure everything in it is correct, reliable. The first one is that, so the first point, the first instruction to have a good, inshallah, month of Ramadan is that we should make use of this fresh energy that this month brings. Now, Every new chapter in our life, be it the new year, be it a birthday, be it a month of Ramadan, any new chapter with it brings a new energy. You must have all seen that how, you know, in the new year, people write all these resolutions. And everyone says that, inshallah, from next year, I will try to lose some weight, go to the gym, maybe I'll read Quran more, right? And this is because new things, new chapters in life give us energy, help us to start again, right? But what is the problem with that? After a few weeks or sometimes even days, we stop, right? So that's the famous saying, right? 1st of January, all the gyms are packed. 15th of January, no one's there. Why? Because in the first few days, everyone's excited. In 2017, I'm going to do this. But after a while, the energy from that fresh start is gone. But look how beautiful our religion is that has taken this into consideration. So it gives us so many opportunities for a fresh start. So in the year, you all, we all try to become better people, but sometimes we fail, we get distracted by job, by family, and then Rajab comes. And you're like, okay, from Rajab this month, I will try to be a better person. So it gives you a new push, a new energy. And then you, for a few days, you try to be a better person. You try to recite the dua after the prayer. You have this energy. And as soon as it's fading, you have the new month. You have Sha'ban. Again, it gives you energy. This is, so that was the month of Istighfar. This is the month of worship. So it, gives, it keeps giving us opportunities, new chapters. And one of the, we know, one of the best one of these is the month of Ramadan. And so it's really great to use this month as a fresh start, fresh energy. And you know, this is a, very interestingly, um, some psychologists of religion have even proven the effect of this. The effect of istighfar on strengthening willpower. So once you repent from your sins, and try to say, okay, all the things I've done so far, I'm sorry, God, forgive me, right? I'll start new. So they've proven that this gives you so much more energy and willpower to, to act much better. You know, we just recited in Dua Kumail, right? Fi uh, layla wa fi said, forgive all my sins when? Tonight, fi layla in this night, so right now, in this hour and in this night, forgive all the sins I've committed. I want to start again, right? I want to forget about all the mistakes I've made. I'm sorry for them now, I want to start again. And this is the beauty of our religion that knows 
how we work and has given us all these opportunities, all these new and fresh chapters so that we gain energy. And inshallah, as we know, Ramazan is, 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 a, great, is a great opportunity to do this again, to ask forgiveness for all we've done so far and have a new start. And this takes me to the second point, right? I said I'll mention seven points. So the first one was this. Make the most out of this fresh energy that Ramazan brings with itself. The second point is that, okay, now we want to make the most out of this. We want to use Ramazan. We want to make sure that we use our time. We worship God. Now the second point is this. Set specific and realistic goals for yourself. What do I mean by that is that Sometimes we just say, okay, this Ramadan, I want to be a better person, right? But that is so general, so vague, that it's very difficult to measure if you've made any progress, right? If you just say, okay, this Ramadan, I'll try to be a better person, then after a few weeks, how do you measure that? What do you do in order to be a better person? So it's a bit specific, it's a bit general. So our goal and again, we have this in the hadith. It's very good to, to specify it, to know exactly what is it that you're trying to do this Ramadan. And again, sometimes we, we get overexcited. We say, okay, now I'm going to work on my anger. I'm going to work, I'm going to like sleep less, talk less, eat less. Um, I'm going to do, I'm going to be nicer. I'm going to do all of these things. And we take so much on, we take so many things to do all at once that we fail in all of them. So as a suggestion, that is not from me, it's in the hadith. So in a way, it's actually more than a suggestion. What they have recommended us to do, like to focus our mind on this Ramadan, month of Ramadan, what do we want to achieve, is the best thing is to be mindful of God. Try to remember God in all the hours of the day, right? And this is what they say, uh, the month of Ramadan is the month of God. So, and this is very easy to measure. Just try to see how many hours of the day your, your thought is with God. And that doesn't mean that necessarily you're, you're praying or you're reciting the Quran. No, even when you're with your family or at work, right? But your thought, your, your attention, your focus is with God. And this is very easy to measure, right? In the morning when you wake up, start talking to God, say, Bismillah, I will, inshallah, my intention is that today, anything I do will be for you. I will remember you. And check yourself by night, see how, how, how much were you distracted from this. Like maybe at, you had this intention, but at work you forgot about it. Right? So I think this is a very good goal. Again, we had uh, in, the, and in the end of Dua Kumail. وَإِلَيْكَ يَا رَبِّ النَّسَبْتُ وَجْهِ Right? And I face towards you. Right? So that's what we should do. Let's face our attention, our focus towards God. And, and this is something that we should keep measuring. Right? There was this letter from Alamut Tabatabai to this uh, young, to this 20-year-old uh, person who asked for advice. He said, I want to... Uh, I want to get closer to God, but I don't know what to do. What is the way? I've tried so many things, but I've failed. The intention is there, the sincerity is there, but any time I try, I keep failing. And Allah Mutabatabai gives him a few instructions, certain verses to recite at night, certain verses, the, the ending verses of Surah Hash. He says, recite this every night. But another thing that he, he tells this, this young person, and which is very interesting, is that do two things. In the morning when you wake up, sincerely, try to promise that anything I do, I'll check my intention. If it's for God, I'll do it, otherwise I won't. Just have this intention in the morning. Most definitely, you'll forget some point during the day, right? But at least in the morning, you've made this promise, and you try to hold on to it. And then at night, check how successful you were. If you forgot, then ask for forgiveness, and if you actually succeeded, then say Alhamdulillah, and then start the next day. And it's the, the interesting point is here that Allah tells him that after 20 days, you will see the effect of this. Why? Because again, we had in this Dua Kumail. Dua Kumail is so beautiful, right? Ya man ismuhu dawa wa 
Shifa. The one whose name is the cure and his remembrance is the Shifa. Right? So that's why if even for 20 days we try to have the remembrance of God, it, it, it'll, it'll have its impact. You'll see that, and inshallah if we do this in Ramadan, so we'll see that by mid-Ramadan, by 20 days after Ramadan, we already feel this, that God is more present in our life. You know, the first is very difficult. At first, you keep forgetting. But as you practice more and more, you see that even when you're with people, even when you're talking, part of your attention is with God. And it's very interesting because you feel like no matter who is there, God is with you too. And it's such a nice experience to have. It's such a joyful thing to have. No matter who you are with, you feel like you're with God. And, and it's very... The, the result will come very soon. And inshallah, if you practice this, inshallah, the result will come very soon. So that was the second point. Right? First one was... Use the energy, the fresh energy of Ramazan. Ramazan is a new chapter. Ask forgiveness for all the sins you've committed and we have committed. And start again, start afresh. Second one was have a specific goal, something you can measure. Don't say I'm just going to be a better person. What does that mean? Right? Try to focus on one thing. And as a suggestion from the Ahadith, I recommend this to you. And even myself. Let's all of us, let's try to be, let's try to remember God more. Anything we do, anywhere we are, any person we're keeping company of, let's try to be mindful of God. So that was the second one. What is the third one? The third one, the third point for, that we can get help from in Ramazan is to act more than we read. I remember a friend of mine a few years ago he had came across this series of lectures and, uh, on, 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 on self-purification, which we just read from Surat Shams, how important it is, right? So he said, I came across this uh, lecture series from this uh, brother in Canada. Many of you may know him. It's a very beautiful series on YouTube. Uh, so he said, I listened to the first session and it was so beautiful, so many good points on how to get closer to God, how to establish that connection. And I told him, okay, so, so what did you do? So did you start like implementing what he was saying, like the points, the instructions? He said, well, I mean, so, so what did you do? He said, well, I went for the second lecture. So sometimes this happens. Like we, we, we listen to something and it's really nice, like we're on YouTube. And we keep watching all the, all the lectures. So we spend eight hours learning how we can get closer to God without actually doing anything, right? And this is unfortunately some problem that especially some youth have, and I have it sometimes too. Like um, sometimes, you know, like when we want to become better, we already know what we should do, but we're still asking for more. We're still looking for the complicated details of, of mysticism and how we should this. While many of us were lacking at the basic levels, Right? I remember this, um, uh, this teacher of akhlaq was saying, I, can see, I see a person who is still getting angry and he's asking me for mystical tips. Right? If you still have problem with your anger, that's what we should be focusing on. Right? Yes, listening to talks is good if it gives you inspiration, if it gives you motivation. But at the end of the day, many of us, we really know what we should do. Right? I... I think, again, this is from Allah Tabatabai. He said, sometimes one incident of losing temper, like you get angry and uh, you do dhulm, like you shout at your family or at someone at work. He said, sometimes only one incident of losing temper and, and then shouting at someone when, when they really haven't done anything wrong takes you back years in your spiritual journey. Right? And we know all of, the, all of us, we know this. We know that we shouldn't get angry. We know that we should be nice. We know all these beautiful virtues that the Prophet said, I, I, was, I was appointed by God because of this, right? The Prophet, when he wanted to say the reason that God chose him as the Prophet and the mission, he said, says, the purpose of my mission, of my prophethood, is to establish these good moral virtues. To be nice, to be generous, not to get angry. 
And all of us, we know this, right? So the third instruction that again we have in the ahadith is that we all know what we should do. The problem is not with the knowledge sometimes. It's with the deed, it's with acting upon it. And we have this beautiful um, instruction. Man amila bima ya'lam, aldamahullah ma lam ya'lam. The one who does the things he know. So you know you have to be nice. You know you should have remembrance of God in your prayer. You know that you should uh, be generous. You know that you shouldn't backbite. Act according to these. The rest of it, God will teach you himself. This is a promise. God himself will inspire you for the things we don't know. Right? And again, we have it in the Quran. Those who strive in our way, those who try in our way to improve themselves, we ourselves, so God and the angels, we will show them the way. Right? So don't worry about things you don't know. It's not about knowledge that much for many of us. It's about acting the things we know. And sometimes, unfortunately, and I'm, and I'm not saying this to anyone, I'm saying this to all of us. It's a good reminder for all of us. We overlook certain things. Right? Um, I remember I was listening to this beautiful talk by, and, uh, and it mentioned sometimes people come to him and tell him to this teacher of akhlaq. So he said, sometimes people come to me and say, yes, there's, there's a very good person, very religious, very moral. The only problem with him is that he gets really aggressive and angry. And he said, I told him, how do you call him a religious person if he gets angry? Right? But unfortunately, we overlook these things. There's this beautiful story of a person who was trying to collect gems. And he collected so many gems and put it in the container. But at the end of it, he looked and there's, he saw that there's nothing in the container. And then he realized, oh, there was a hole below it, that any gem he put into it, it just falls from that hole. And they say one, one moral vice, like one uh, problem with our akhlaq is like that. Sets fire to all of our deeds. So we wonder sometimes, we've been praying, we've been reciting dua kumil, why don't we see the effect? Well, one moral vice, like I don't know if it's anger, if it's jealousy, if it's backbiting, just one, one of it is enough to set fire to all the good things we do. So we keep collecting gems, but the container has a hole below it and all of it falls. Right? So, so the third point is this. It's, it's really good to listen to talks. It's really good to read books. But at some point, we should start acting as well. Right? Many of the things we need, we know. And the rest of it, God says, I will teach you. Man amila bima ya'lam, allamahullah ma lam ya'lam. Right? So that's the third point. The fourth point, which is a collection uh, of perhaps uh, tens of books of akhlaq, of ahadith, maybe hundreds of ahadith, tens of books of akhlaq. And I've tried to put all of them together and get this point from them. The result of maybe years of, of working on, on, on this. And that is this. Have a spiritual toolkit, emergency box. What do I mean by this? You know, we're all different. We all relate to different things. Like if I ask you, what is your favorite verse in the Quran? Or what is your favorite hadith? Or what is your favorite phrase in Dua Kumay? I'm sure most of us will give different answers, right? Because we all have different challenges, we all have different experiences, we all relate to different things. So one thing that is very good is to keep a list of things that you relate to. The verses of the Quran that make you feel better. Or the hadith. Or the phrases in Dua Kumay or Munajat Sha'baniyyah. And keep a list of these. See, what, see when you are down, when you are forgetting God. What is that verse that motivates you to reconnect to God? What is that one hadith that has such a strong impact on you that no matter how distracted you are from God, from the Ahl al-Bayt, takes you back to the path of Ahl al-Bayt? Keep a list of this. 
And then as soon as you notice, like sometimes we're so distracted, we don't even notice that we're getting far from Ahlul Bayt or far from God. But sometimes we catch ourselves. Oh, it's been a few days that I don't have that presence of heart in my prayers anymore. Sometimes this happens, right? Like before, I used to have so much energy, like I was excited for the time of prayer. And suddenly I feel like now, it's, it's been a few days that my ta'ribat is less. I have less energy, I have less presence, my mind is getting more distracted as I'm praying. So as soon as you catch yourself in a state like this, go to your, to your toolkit. And, and see what is there that would motivate you. What verse, know this, it's good to know this. Know that what verse of the Quran has more impact on you, or what hadith is it that helps you. So this is very interesting, and, and, and I guarantee you the result of it is, is amazing. We have so many ahadith for different things, like for, for the times of stress, for the times of worry. We have this ahadith that, that calms you down. Like maybe there's a problem at work, maybe there's a problem at home. There's something you really worry about. Maybe there's this call that you're worried to get. Any minute a bad news is about to come. Well, there's a hadith for, for these times. And it's so good to have them at hand. Like in my room, I have all these sticky notes of all these hadith. And as soon as I feel like I'm, I'm losing my calm, I, I refer to them. There's this hadith, beautiful hadith from Imam Ali alayhi salam. His He says, Man alima anna ma qaddar Allah lan yafutah istaraha qalbah. The one who knows that what God wants to give him, what God has decreed for him, will definitely reach him. His heart will always be calm. Right? As in a way, it, it's a guarantee. It's like you're worried, you're stressed that something bad will happen. Maybe I'll lose this. Maybe something bad will happen. To, and Imam Ali السلام, is telling you, don't worry. What God wants to give you will reach you no matter what. Imagine the impact of this hadith, right? Or this verse in the Quran that if God wants to give you something good, even if the whole world wants to stop it, it they can't. It will reach you. So how amazing is it to have these verses in our toolkit and then as soon as we feel like we're worried or we're stressed or we're far from God, we refer to it, you read it, and then it, it'll, it'll establish this beautiful connection with God. It'll strengthen your tawakkul, your tawassul. So keep a list of these things. And it doesn't always have to be a verse of the Quran. Sometimes it's calling your parent. That's what my, uh, you know, what we have in a lot of the hadith the impact of the prayer of parents. And this is something my father always does. When something important is about to happen, he always calls his mother, his parents, ask for their prayer. These are nice things. See what makes you feel better and keep a list of this. It's worship. All of these are different types of worship. Okay, we have to uh, speed up. So that was the fourth one. The fifth one is don't be disappointed by failures, right? I guarantee you, many of us will decide to be better, to be more connected to God, but after a few days, we'll make a mistake, we'll fail. It's bound to happen. Relapses happen, it's natural. It's really bad that it does, actually. If it didn't, it would be really good. But unfortunately, it happens, right? No one can with, I mean, few people can with one pill, willpower and one decision change for the rest of their lives. It's very difficult. We decide not to get angry and we, we succeed for 10 days, 20 days, and then something happens and then we lose our temper. But what is very important is that don't get disappointed by that failure. Don't think that you're back to square one. This is what I keep hearing from people. They say, I tried for two months and now I'm back to square one because I made a mistake. No, you are not back to square one. All the progress is there. Say astaghfirullah, get up, start again. And we have this beautiful hadith again. It's amazing. It just shows the mercy of God. It says, after a person commits a sin, if they repent, if they say astaghfirullah and they really regret, before seven hours, God won't even write that in the letter of our deed. Right? So I think the message about this is that if you made a mistake, okay, you're regretting it, get up, start again. 
don't waste your time focusing too much on it that it keeps you from worshiping. Right? So the hadith says if you committed a sin and you really, for, you really regret it, and it's not seven hours yet, they won't even write it in the letter of your deeds. How beautiful, how merciful God is. Right? So, so this is the fifth one. If you will make a mistake, don't focus too much on it. It's really bad. We should try not to make any mistake, right? Because a sin is like getting injured. Right? We don't want to get injured. But if we got injured, we haven't died. We can still move on. Right? So get up and move. So that's the fifth one. The sixth one is rely on God. And this is, I think, the most important of these seven. Rely on God. And on our own, we cannot do this. We cannot go through the journey of self-purification without the help of God. Again, this is a hadith. It says, Subhanaka ma adhyaka turqu ala man lam takun daliluh, dalilah. It says how narrow, how tight is the way for those that don't have you as their guide. So if you want to go on this journey of self-purification without the help of God, it's almost impossible. And then it says how clear and how open the ways are for the one that is guided by God. Right? So always know that any change we want to do, any improvement we want to have, we can only do it with the help of God. And something, like one of the most beautiful, like one of my favorite phrases in all the hadith is this one. You know, if you've had the experience of trying to improve yourself and failed so many times, it, you reach this point that you're kind of upset with yourself. You're like, why am I like this? I really want to improve. I want to get closer to God. I want to get closer to the Ahlul Bayt. I want to have that joy that Imam Sajjad had when he was talking to God. But I can't have that because of my actions. So it reaches this state that you really feel that you're upset with yourself. And there's this phrase which is very beautiful. It says, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min nafsin la tashba." It says, God, I seek refuge to you from my own nafs. So you're complaining to God about yourself, right? Once you realize that all your efforts didn't really take you anywhere, say, God, I tried and I failed. You take my hand, you help me. And we have this in so many of our du'as from the aim. This is very beautiful. So the sixth point is this. Rely on God's mercy, rely on God's help. This is all tawakkul is. And there's this beautiful verse in Quran in which uh, Prophet Ibrahim says, in, uh, ila rabbi I am going to my Lord and he will guide me. Right? So know that guidance is from God. All our attempts should be under the guidance of God, with the help of God. And the sixth, the seventh one, and the final point, something that I really hope you take this one at least from me, and I really hope that you keep this with you for the rest of your life, is that bring God to your life and enjoy your time with God. What I mean by this is that unfortunately, many of the worships we do are fixed. For years and years and years in our qunut, we say the same dua, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana. But this is not the way it should be. You can say many different things. See how you feel that, that day. Like sometimes I go to these prayers and I am so inspired by the phrase like the, the, the Imam says in, in their prayer. Sometimes they mention a phrase from Dua Kumail, my favorite. Allahumma inni as'aluka bijudika and tudniani min qurbik. Oh God, I ask you from your mercy that make me closer to you. Right? Bring life into your prayer. Bring joy into your prayer. Bring things that you can relate to. If you recite Dua Kumail and you see that, oh, there's this phrase, that the sentence that the Imam is telling to God, I love this, I relate to this. You can recite that in your unut. Or if you want to talk to God, you don't always to say, Ya Allah, Ya Rabbi. 
God has so many names, so many beautiful names. See which one you relate to. If you feel like you need guidance, say, Ya Hadi, Ya Hadi, Ya Hadi. Or the one who guides. If you feel alone, say, Ya Nur al Mustawhashina fil Dhulam. Or the light of the lonely ones. If you feel like you, your family doesn't understand you, you're alone, you say, Ya Ani Samalla, Ya Ani Samalla Munisalla. Or the, the company of the one who doesn't have any company. Or the friend of the one who doesn't have any friend. Right? Bring life into your connection with God. It can be very beautiful. That's what matters at the end of the day. That we feel a friendship with God. We feel His love. So, for example, a suggestion is this. If you're reading the Quran and you come across something that you can relate to, and you want to talk to God that day, keep saying that name. Like if you, for example, read Ayatul Kursi and says, God is the guardian of the believers, takes them from darkness to light. And you feel like you're not really in a good position in your life. You want, to, you want God to take you from darkness to light. Well, then that night when you want to sleep, keep saying that to yourself. Ya Right? It doesn't have to be very fixed. You can, God has so many beautiful names. We should make use of all of them. See which one we relate to and then, and then have that connection with God. So this was the seventh one. Enjoy your time with God. Right? When you're praying, don't just do the prayer. Perform the prayer. And this is what the Prophet always, was always trying to tell us. There's this hadith from the Prophet, I think, in which he says every prayer that you pray, every salat, is a different being. He says in the hereafter, you will meet every single prayer. Don't feel like it's just one thing, and if I miss this one, I'll get another chance. No. Treat every prayer with so much importance, so much significance. Enjoy it. Make a big deal out of it. So I'm going to talk to my Lord. I'm going to talk to my God. If you have a problem, then talk to God. So really try to establish this close connection with God. And it's really easy, you know. Some faraha, they say that even in your qunut, it doesn't even have to be in Arabic. Talk to God. Say, God, I, I really want to get close to you, but I have this problem. If you're scared, ask God for help. If you're stressed, ask God for help. And it, you will really see the impact of this. So the seventh one was bring joy into your worship. Do the things that you really relate to, Right? Like, um, even in the sajda, in the last sajda of our prayer, right? You can, you can say so many different prayers. Ask God for something else. See what is your request. If you have, for example, a loved one that now has, a, has an illness, or you have an illness yourself, say, Ya Shafi, Ya Shafi, or the one who cures, or the one who cures. And you'll see that your relation with God becomes more real. It's not superficial. So at the end of the day, at the end of Ramadan, ask yourself this. How much closer have I become to God? Do I really feel like God is my friend? Can I talk? To... If I don't talk to God for a while, do I feel like I miss him? This is what Imam Sajjad says. I ask forgiveness from you for all the laughs that I didn't remember you. From all the pleasures I had that you, wasn't, you, you weren't tender. This is the way Imam Sajjad is talking to God. And let's see if we can have the same connection with God. That if we don't talk to Him, we miss Him. That, you know, many people are like that. When they, when they wake up in the morning, the first thing they say is they talk to God. I have another chance to worship you. So this is what matters at the end of the day. And I, inshallah, I hope that we all achieve this. We all make the most out of our Ramadan in order to establish this connection with God. May Allah, inshallah, help all of us. May Allah, inshallah, cure all the, uh, all the people who have illnesses from the community and all the mu'mineen around the world. And may, inshallah, Allah forgive all the marhumin of people here and all the community, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Please recite salawat.